Praise him with the loud them cymbals. Praise him with the clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Today, today, the Lord has made. Yes. I will rejoice again. Yes. Praise the Heavenly Father. This is the Heavenly Father. I turn to heaven, 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 to, to, uh, welcome back uh, to the half of the Lord. And for all the people, pay some answer in the first day of our life, Father. To pray for pay some answer on them. To put the angels of wire in our life, Father. Tell him, tell him you love him, Father. Because I know you need. I know you so awesome God, Father. Thank you for all you've done, Father. Pray for the, the mothers right now. Pray for the mothers and uh, tell them, happy Valentine's Day to you, Father. Because I, I know I got things in my mind right now, Father. Father, pray for the, the sick and struggling in the home. He put food in the table, clothes in my back, shoes on my feet. He put wood in my head. Thanks for the I love. Pray for the people in the street right now, not got no harm. Not got no food, no shelter. No, no, Father. That needs some for the life. Thank you for the youth right now. Pray for the youth right now to have them be, to be strong right now, yeah. to, to leave the name of power. For all the prayer for our daddy right now, because I know our daddy is still sick right now. For all the prayer for her to, 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 uh, to speak to her, to pray for her to name in our daddy name right now, for her to, to help them how you be saved, Father. Cause purple, purple, wicked right now. To help him put the angel right here, right now, Father. Put the angel right here, Father, to, to let him know how he be a man, what he is. And Father, please pray for me. Cause I got things in my mind right now, purple. Share with her right now to let her know I still love her how you is. And Father, I name of Jesus, Father, to marry little baby right now. Baby Jesus died on that cross. He put nails in his hand, nails in his feet, put in the side, the blood was still me down. He took him down on that cross on the third day. He wound up with God. Whole palace in his hand. I want to say I love you, Father. Thank you for an awesome Father. Awesome Pastor Master. Thank you for being here. Thank you for choosing me. I be a man while I am. I want to say Pastor Master. Keep on doing what you're doing. Be strong. And, and welcome back to the house of love. Amen. Yeah, amen.
what he has done for me this past week. Yesterday, last night, my, my heart is filled with grace. Did he keep you last night? Did he watch over you while you slept in the form of death? Get you out of home and thank you. Did he help you along from the way? That's why my heart is filled with praise. When I didn't deserve mercy, he gave me mercy. When I didn't deserve uh, the love that he gave me, that's why my heart is filled with praise. Paul says he bits. Yet while I was a sinner and doing sinful things, he sent his son to give his life for you and for me. That's why my heart is filled with praise. It's all for time. Mission education offering. You know, we all are going through something, good or bad. But you got to remember, whatever it is that we're going through, God is drawing us closer to Him. And we just got to hold on, y'all. Just got to hold on. How many of you love Jesus? Don't move it now. We're going to say that.
Father God, we are again thankful for a portion of what we have received in this service. And we pray, Lord, that we even go higher, take us higher in your word, minister to our hearts and our minds, and to let us know that everything is all right. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 We have some prayer requests here. Martin Hudson, Nana Rain, Big Mama, without, excuse me, White, Boy Turner, Alvin Turner, but King and family, we have prayer for the family. Y'all forgive me, I can't see this. But the Lord knows. The Lord knows what's on our heart. The Lord knows what we need. And I'm going to say that the old folks said it best. He may not come when you want, but he's always on time. Amen. It's prayer time, y'all. The old folks used to say, I need the every hour. The old folks said it. And I believe that the old folks know what they were talking about. <laughs> You can stand where you are, or you come to the house. Again, I've learned that when you come to the altar, it's about my condition in life. Not my wants or my needs, but my condition. In the Old Testament, when they went to the altar, they put it all on the altar. Don't hold back someone because he knows and he can see the things that we're going through. The things we did behind closed doors, the things we said when nobody else was around. We just gonna go to him in prayer. And as I pray, you pray as well. Because my God is so awesome. And you he can hear me pray, and all of us pray simultaneously. And never get your prayers mixed up with mine. We serve an awesome God, y'all. What is it that's bothering you? Take it to God in prayer. And when you get through, just leave it, God. Don't take it with you. Leave it right there. Let us pray. Our Father, our Father, holy, holy is thy name. Lord, we come to you, no shape, no form, no fashion. We may be driven. Lord, you know our hearts, and you know our minds. You know the things that we're struggling through, and you know because of some things we've done outside of what you told us to do experiencing some hardships in life. And because we've done those things that you told us to do, we experience some, some hardship because Lord, we understand that we have some haters. You said in your word, if they hate me, they're going to hate you too. Father, right now we pray for the prayer request on these papers and we're praying for the prayer requests of the people that you know our hearts, Father. We ask you to touch us to whatever it is that we're facing. And Lord, whatever it is that we're facing, you have given the answer in your word that we can go to your word and find the answer, good or bad, tragedy, sad or happy. It's in your word, Lord. Lord, we pray for the church. Strengthen us, oh Father. Where we're weak, Lord. And where we're too strong, humble us. That we may understand that it's you, oh God, who is drawing us 
closer to you. No matter what it is that we're going through. Let us keep holding on to your unchanging hand. We pray that your church will be an influence on this world. And Lord, we're praying for your love for this church. We're celebrating Valentine's. But Lord, you have given the greatest Valentine gift that man could ever have. It is your son, Jesus. Who hung, bled, and died. That we may have this right to worship, to come into your house. And give you praises because of just who you are. We ask your blessings upon the parents. We ask your blessing upon the children. We ask your blessing upon the old and the new. The Lord, whatever we do will be to glorify you. Now, Lord, give us strength where we stand, the circumstances that we're in. Strengthen our hearts and our faith. For I heard that your word said, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Encourage us to keep pushing on. Sometimes we get tired, Father, but strengthen us. Breathe on us. Thank you, Lord, for your many blessings. Thank you for those who cared for us when we couldn't care for ourselves. Thank you, Lord, for our pastor. Thank you for his wife. Lord, we just thank you, 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 thank you. From the bottom of our hearts. Lord, we know that you are in the midst right now. Stir up the gift that's in this house. Stir up the minds and the hearts of your people. For you're loving us so much. And Lord, not, not just with lip service that we say thank you, but Lord, we want to show you in our gratitude towards you. This day, this is the day that the Lord has made that we should rejoice and be glad in it. And Lord, when we leave this place, let our hearts be so much in fire that we may tell somebody, a dying world, about your love. How far you brought us and how far you will keep us. <coughs> when you say it, your words are not returning to you, Lord. Have your way, Lord. And Lord, when you have your way, and when you give your answer, it may not be what we want. But Lord, strengthen and encourage us that to know it will be all right. Now, Lord, again, just have your way in this service. Have your way in our lives, for you are our owner. You are the giver of life. And just have your way with us and through us. In the name of Jesus, we ask it all. Amen. Amen.
Try Jesus. If you don't like him, the devil will always take you back.
And, uh, so I think what's next? Okay. We call it heritage relationship, man. Huh? But I want you to understand one thing. Whatever it is, I want you to stand in the house. Don't let the enemy steal or die. Thank you. 
Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Amen. I'm so glad to see you guys in the house of the Lord today. Amen. Amen. Happy Valentine's Day. Amen. This is my favorite day of the year. It's the day of love, or God is love. Amen. Amen. So, it's my favorite. Anyway, I have the privilege and the honor of presenting this living le legend recognition to my dear friend, because I said I wanted to make sure I did this one. Um, I've known this gentleman so long, um, in his words he would say, I've known him since the womb, <laughs> which is true. <laughs> we stayed down the street from each other and our parents knew each other, our family. Yeah, so, uh, this living legend recognition is presented to Brother Roy Tim. <laughs> Did your work assignments ahead of all your other classmates? <laughs> then a pinch of boredom sets in, accompanied by a dash of dead silence. The next thing the class experiences is a crashing impromptu drum solo with pencils on the desk and on anything else within arm's length that will make a clanking sound. Look at his fingers. He's not. <laughs> Sounds unbelievable? Well, it's not when describing the early musical development of Roy Terrell II. Roy was so taken with music, particularly the drums, at an early age that he found anything to create a beat. He was another Eleonora Terrell, and when he and when he was tired of regular outdoor playtime, he would go into her kitchen and pull out her pots and pans and create a pile of whatever it seemed at the time a bunch of aggravating steel claps. When it became apparent that his constant desire to create music wasn't a passing fancy, Roy's parents bought him his first drum set. We remember. <laughs> he began private lessons at the Lakeside Music School under Ernest Lampkin and grew to develop his coordinate and sharpen his technique and reading skills. After some time, it was discovered by Reverend Dr. E. Edward Jones, senior pastor of the Galilee Baptist Church in Shreveport, Louisiana that he was playing drums and he officiated to uh, add drums to the church's minist music ministry for the first time in history. He went on to participate in the marching band and concert bands at Captain Street High School. Go Gators! <laughs> After high school graduation, Roy discovered that he had an additional interest when he attended Louisiana State University in Shreveport. <laughs> for a summer session in computers, which would later define his professional career. The following fall, he attended McNeese State University in Lafayette, Louisiana, where he majored in mortuary science. While at McNeese, he played and became a proud member of Alpha Phi Alpha fraternity. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was going to go. <laughs> After his sophomore year, Roy located to Dallas, Texas to attend the Dallas Institute of Funeral Services. With Roy being new to the city of Dallas, his parents knew of a prominent funeral director in the city <laughs> named Alan G. Madison and wanted to introduce Roy to him. An immediate connection was made between the two. Under the leadership and mentorship of Alan G. Madison, yay, Pastor Madison, Roy gained valuable experience by working at the Singing Hills Funeral Home, serving in any capacity needed. It was discovered once again that Brother Roy Roy was a drummer, and after some time for consideration, he became the first jump drummer for the St. Mark Missionary Baptist Church. <laughs> Brother Roy has gone on to accomplish many other personal and professional accolades over the years, with becoming a husband and a father, uh, being one of his pr proudest accomplishments. He has been married to Shawana Terrell for the past 15 years. <laughs> That's right. 
And the two of them have three lovely daughters, Chantel, the North Town, Shelby, and Chase. We today would like for you to stand Amen. as we salute my Roy Roy, Brother Roy Carroll. Overall, 
He has diligently committed himself faithfully to the work of the ministry for Christ, and God has called him to higher heights. Amen. Recognizing his calling upon Brother Mims, Pastor Madison, along with Deacon Arthur Turner, poured a wealth of spiritual knowledge into him. Brother Turner began to give his biblical books and handouts to study, and more he, the more he studied, the more intrigued he became about the gospel of Jesus Christ. Later, without hesitation, Reverend Madison made the decision to ordain Jim R. Reigns. And now he stands before us today where we faithfully, and he has earned the title, Reverend Neil Roy Reigns. dedicated husband of Sister Lana Range in her absence. And they have one son, Kendrick Range, and two grandchildren. Please stand with us as we celebrate one of St. Mark's living nations. Lover's Squad Team of the Year. 
After graduation from high school, she enrolled in Texas Columbus University, where she earned her bachelor's degree in nursing. She worked at Parkland several years as a floor nurse in one of the postpartum units and was soon promoted to head nurse. Because of her skills in her area of specialty, she was promoted to Parkland's education and training department and gave the responsibility to provide the training and updates to new and existing employees. She worked a total of 40 years in the nursing care before retiring from GISD, Joseph J. Rose Elementary School in 2011. While working at Parkland, she made and married the love of her life, Alan D. Maxwell. and currently serves as the under shepherd of St. Mark Missionary Baptist Church. She is the mother of Carissa Madison Levine and Nana to her stepdaughter, Jerome Sue Dallas, Marlo Luzo. Sister Madison is a member of the Women's Chorus. She is the primary teacher of the Adults Women's Sunday School class. She is a member of St. Mark's Leadership Team. Here, her vision a little, her vision a little over a year ago of keeping adults 50 plus active in church led to the establishment of the Oasis, older adults still in service ministry. Through this ministry, she launched a relationship with the North Texas Food Bank to provide food, affectionately known as the Food Drive, to members of the church as well as those of the community. Sister Madison is also a strong advocate for the youth of the church, providing encouragement, advice, guidance, and growth. Since retirement, she continues to be very active in several organizations outside of St. Mark. They are the Metropolitan Women Ministers Wives Widows Union, the Gallery Greens Association's Own One Ministers Wives and Widows Ministries Chair Lady. She served as a group leader in the Bible Study Fellowship International Organization. She is also a member of the African American CP Alliance for Mental Health. President of the Parkland TWU Nurse Alumni Association and the Assistant Director of CHAT, Connecting Health Action Together. Her favorite Bible verse is Isaiah 40 and 30. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall rise right. up on the wind like it. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Her favorite song is to God be the glory, tribute by Sister Pauletta M. Jones, her sister. We salute Sister Matthew. <laughs>
and worshiping with us today and also sharing with us and caring with us for these visionaries, uh, these missionaries. These are special people and they do special things for Christ. But I would like, we would like, we always like to close out uh, at the end of our presentation. Uh, could I see the hands of our visitors, please? Praise the Lord. Uh, we want today, uh, the St. Mark Missionary Baptist Church, the Matrons Ministry, we want, uh, we thank you for being present on our focus. The Living Legend Recognition and Acknowledgement Period. Congratulations. You have been awarded and extended. These visitors are loving friends. The honorary and temporary membership for today only. You have temporary membership. <laughs> Welcome and please come back to worship with us. May God bless you and keep you. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much.
And it can also be said, if God is not in our plans, we still fail to plan. Do I have a witness this morning? What are some practice and insight, young know, people, that James shared with us today here in our text? Let me just throw three of my at you and I take my seat. In verse 13, we see the folly of counting on the future. James was writing to some wealthy merchants who no doubt was traveling all over the ancient world buying and selling in the major markets of that day. And because of the logistics that they would have been facing during that time, it would have taken them at least, young people, a year just to set up to do business. But you will notice here, James has pointed out how their presumption about the uncertainty of the future had no impact on their attitude when it came to making plans. Yeah, yeah, they, it, it had no impact on their attitude when it came to making plans. So, so James starts out by saying to them in verse 13, now, now listen, as if to say, I know y'all think y'all, y'all got it going on. I know you think, as he was talking to these wealthy merchants, I, I know y'all think that y'all are all of that. But to be presumptuous about the future is foolish. Young people, I just want to let you know that hey, you, you, you can't take your future for granted. See, these businessmen, these businessmen, they, they thought they had a good business plan. They really did. They thought they had a real good business plan. James spells it out right there in verse 13. See, they thought they had a business plan that was really figured out. They, they, they had the, where the wind figured out. He says, today or tomorrow. They had the where for their business plan figured out. This city or that city. They even had the how of their business plan figured out. We're gonna spend about a year doing this. They even had the what this plan figured out. Do business, and they had the why of their business plan figured out. Do business so we can make some money. But James wanted them to know they left the who out of their business plan. Nowhere, young people, nowhere same or in their plan did they include God. And James wanted them to know that whenever you make a plan and God is not in it, you are really making a mistake. And oftentimes, young people, we find ourselves guilty of the same thing. We find ourselves making plans. Find ourselves saying what we're going to do. Find ourselves making plans on where we're going to go. What we're going to do. Who we're going to be with. What we're going to buy. And we, we make all these plans, but we fail to consider God. And then when they fall flat on their face, we try to figure out what happened. James would have us to know that whenever you make a plan and, 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 and God is not in it, you, you're really being foolish. You, you, you're really being foolish. Young people, we have to consider God when we make our plans. Notice he says here, he points out to us the folly of counting on the future in verse 13, but in verse 14, he says the reason why it's foolish to count on the future because of the frailty of life. Right there in verse 14. See these men, these wealthy business merchants, they thought they were going to be around forever. You know anybody like that? They, 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 they thought they were going to be around forever, but, but the church, we can't think that way. Young people, you can't think that just because you're young you're going to be around forever. You know the reason why you can't think that way? One is because life is unpredictable. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Life is unpredictable. Life, really young people, is a big gift. Mm -hmm. Life really is a big gift. Right in the middle of the word life, you'll find if somebody missed it, somebody missed it. 
But you'll get it. You'll, you'll, you'll get it. Even if it's on the way home, you'll get it. But right in the middle. And I'm almost finished, that month, believe it or not. I'm almost finished. But right in the middle of the word life is if. What is Red Bear trying to say to young people? I'm just trying to tell you that life is if. Life is iffy. And the reason why I say that is because James tells us in verse 14, we don't even know what tomorrow's going to bring. Mm -hmm. Not only that, we, not only do we not know what tomorrow is going to bring, we don't even know what this evening is going to bring. Anybody know? We, 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 we may think we do, but we really don't know. We don't even know what this afternoon is going to be like. We don't even know what the next minute is going to be like. And the reason why we don't know these things is because none of us know the future. Yeah. Yeah. If, if we knew the future, St. Mark, if we really knew the future, we would have known who was going to win the Super Bowl last week. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. oh, we we would have known. We would have known who was going to win the Super Bowl last week. We all had Cam Newton. Holding up in the body. Am I right? What happened about him on the We had Caroline winning the Super Bowl last week. We had Cam getting the MVP trophy last week. We all figured that Caroline was going to win. But because we didn't know the future, a whole lot of folks lost a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody light in the pockets today? Anybody right in the pockets today? See, the only bet that I made was just a verbal bet. I, I, I said they're going to win, and that was the extent of it. I ain't put no money. And the reason for that is because I don't know. I don't know the future. Life is unpredictable. We don't even know what's going to happen the next minute. Thing. We don't even know what's going to happen tomorrow. We can't take our future young people for granted. Just because you're young, for the life and vitality, you, you, you can't assume. You can't assume. You can't assume. We can't assume because life is so unpredictable. Another reason why we, we, life is so fragile and, 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 and the reason why we can't assume is because not only is life unpredictable, it's unmeasurable. It's, it's unmeasurable. It's been said. It's been said that a one dollar bill can only last about 18 months in circulation. Yeah, it's been said that the average lifespan of a, of a one dollar bill is only about 18 months. And I want to suggest saying, well, this is very talking. I hadn't talked to the Federal Reserve, I ain't talking to the, to the, to the government. This is just very, I want to suggest the reason why the lifespan of a one dollar bill is so short, so brief, is because the one dollar bill gets to go everywhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Somebody don't get this in a minute. Yeah, but the, 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 the one dollar bill, the reason why it's life is so brief is because it gets to go everywhere. It gets to go to the store. Pass Master gets to go to the gas station. And it comes to church every Sunday. <laughs> The church, and the pastor, I've come to the conclusion that what we need to do, we need to get the $10 bill saved. We need to get the $20 bill saved. We need to get the $100 bill converted so they can come to church too. Go ahead and read something there. The $1 bill has been converted a long time, a long time. $1 bill at church every Sunday, in Sunday school, in morning worship, in our midweek activities. When, whenever we come together, the one dollar bill is right here with us. I say, we, we need to get an evangelism team together. And see, we can go out and save some, some other bills, some $10 bills, and some $20 bills, and some, some $100 bills, so they can come to Sunday school. So they can come to church as well. Life is unpredictable, life is unmeasurable. Notice what James says here. How life is so unmeasurable. Right there in verse 14. He says, what is life? He says, he says life is, is, is like a vapor. 
it's, it's like a mist. Have you ever had an asshole can and you spray it? He, 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 have you ever been cooking greens on a Sunday morning and you go to check and see how they're doing, you get the beard off of your vapor it comes out? Yeah. He says it's like that, but as soon as it comes, as soon as you see it, 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 it only lasts for a little while. And then it vanishes. It vanishes away. You know, people, that's, that's how I like it. That's, that's why we can't take things for granted. Yeah, that's why we can't take, take things for granted. That's why we can't necessarily count on the future. That's why we, we can't do that because life is so fragile. Life is so fragile. So here's what the psalmist says that we should do. Psalms 90. Here's what the psalmist says in Psalms 90. Lord, teach us how to make the most. That's another translation. How to make the most out of our time. Because time is so brief. Time is so short. Lord, teach us. While I'm in my teenage years, Lord, teach us while I'm in my 20s. Lord, teach us while I'm in my 30s. Lord, teach us how to make the most yeah. out of yeah. our time so that I can grow yeah. in wisdom. Yeah. Right. James gives us some practical insight when it comes to life. One is the folly, the foolishness yeah. of counting on the future. And he said the reason why it's foolish is because the frailty of life. We're here one minute. I got good health one minute. I'm up one minute. Life is too unpredictable. And then last, he helps us to see in verses 15 through 17, the fervency of obedience. James told these wealthy merchants. He said, instead of you being arrogant, instead of thinking that you are all that, instead of going around boasting about yourself, talking about what you and your business partners are going to do, instead of you being arrogant, he said, what you ought to do, what you ought to say, if the Lord is with us, then we would do this. And we would do that. Young people, James is just trying to tell us there's nothing wrong with making plans. Yeah. James is not hating on us making plans. James is not saying we shouldn't make plans for the future. Right. We yeah. shouldn't make plans for our education. We shouldn't make plans for our career. We shouldn't make plans for our retirement. He is not saying that. He's not hating on that. He's just saying when you do make your, pre your plans, you need to preface that yeah. by saying if the law is. Yeah. Yeah. In other words, you need to make sure the law is in yeah. what? You are doing. Do I have a witness to the Bible? Yeah, he says, you, you need to say, if, if the Lord is with us, then I do this. And I do that. I, I have to go to make a habit of that same Mark. Whenever I'm talking to people, when, I'm, when we're talking about 15, I say, well, you know what, you're sure, blah, blah, blah. If the Lord is with us. It, it, because James helps us to see here that really, God is the one who's talking. God is the one who really is in control. We think we really run to something, but, but the truth of the matter is, God is the one who's in control. I don't care how high we go in life, I don't care how much money we accumulate, I don't care how many missions we get in front of our name or behind our name, when it's all said and done, God is the one calling the shot. He's the one that controls our past, He's the one that controls our present, and he's sure going to be the one that controls our future. If Barry was running things, a whole lot of things that had happened in my life would not have jumped off. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of loved ones in my family have gone to glory. That would not have happened if Barry was in control. But see, I had to come to realize I ain't running that. God is the one that's calling the shots. And in conclusion, James says, when we know what we ought to do, and we don't do it, that's what he says in verse 17, is sin. When we know what we ought to do, and we don't do it, what is it that we ought to do as it relates to the text? James says we need to acknowledge God as being the head of our life. He says when we know that's what we ought to do, and we don't do it, that is sin. Because delayed Obedience is disobedience. Right, right. Can I close with a story? Yeah. 
A story was told about how one time Albert Einstein took a train to go to an out-of-town engagement. And as the conductor was coming by to punch his ticket, Dr. Einstein began to explain to the conductor, I can't find my ticket. I looked all in my pockets. I didn't even look in my briefcase, but I can't find my ticket. The conductor said, Dr. Einstein, we all know who you are. And we know you bought a ticket. So don't even worry about it. The conductor walked on to go punch everybody's ticket, but as he was doing that, the conductor turned around and looked, and he saw Dr. Einstein on his hands and his knees, looking under the seat for that ticket. And the conductor came back and said, please, Dr. Einstein, don't worry about that ticket. We know who you are. Out of frustration, Dr. Einstein looked at the conductor and said, I know who I am, too. <laughs> but what I don't know is where I'm going. Now, people, what am I trying to say this morning? Same old, what am I trying to say? All I'm trying to say is this. Like Dr. Einstein, we don't know everything. But God does. Yes. And what better person to surrender your life to, what better person to allow to have control of your life than the person who knows everything? Don't you give God a hand clap? Now, this is an excellent time. This is an awesome opportunity for somebody to surrender the control of their life. Starting with a personal relationship. What a great day. What a, what a great day to come to know the Lord. You are not here by accident. God orchestrated everything so that you can be here. And if you're that person and you want to accept Christ, why don't you take advantage of it? Why don't you come to know the person who knows everything? Or you may be saved, you may already know Christ, but you, you don't have a church home, you're not a regular attender anywhere, and you know you need a place to where you can come and grow with others. And God has spoken and said, this is the place, this is the place, this is the place. If you're that person, if you're one of those two individuals, as our young people say, we invite you to come.
two brothers for your assistance. Now we want to go higher in our service today as we want to give everyone an opportunity to show some love. To show God some love. This is second Sunday and perhaps this is your Sunday, St. Lord, to give your regular offering. And if so, we want to invite you to do so. Thank you, brother. Also, by being Second Sunday, we receive from those who care to support the scholarship fund. St. Mark, for the past 24, 25 years or so, has, has stepped up to the plate when it comes to supporting the members of this church in their undergrad studies. We have committed to help subsidize the first two years of your undergrad study. I think some of y'all maybe say amen. When you think about how much it is, how much it costs to go to school, now what we give may not be able to pay the whole amount, but it can help keep that student loan down a little bit. So we want to invite you to support. So we've got a two brothers here flanking left and right who will receive your regular offering. And then we have people here in the middle who is going to receive your support to the scholarship fund. Ursula, would you please come?
May the Lord bless me. May the Lord keep me. May the Lord cause his countenance to shine upon me and give us peace. In Jesus' name. Amen. Be blessed, thank Mark. Have a great day. If I can never remember, if I can never open the air center, there are requests. Open the air center, there are requests.